What does this go into here? Well, the nine pound hammer, it's a little too heavy for my size, for my size. Roll on, buddy, don't you roll so slow. How can I roll, Lord, Lord, when the wheels won't go? When I die, won't you make my tombstone out of number nine coal? Out of number nine coal. Hey, roll on, buddy. Don't you roll so slow. How can I roll, Lord, Lord, when the wheels won't go? Long way to Harlan, long way to Hazard, just to get a little brew, just to get a little brew. Well, roll on, buddy, don't you roll so slow. Now can I roll on, dog, when the wheels won't go? so slow how can I roll when the wheels won't go <laughs> totally rehearsed right there you go <laughs> that was the big ending did you guys catch the big ending that yeah, we worked on yeah. extensively That's right. there all that practice <laughs> all those years of working on this song uh, have, have just right. completely blown up um I was just reading that, guys. I, I, I was reading that right out of the uh, Real Bluegrass book. That's one of the resources that we have this month. Uh, we're doing it in a different key, though. And I'm not as familiar with the tune as I am with more jazzy stuff, which is kind of stuff that I, the genre that I grew up in, that we played all that stuff all the time. And, and how did you get started with uh, bluegrass? I don't know if we talked about that last time. Um, we did a little bit. I, I heard a guy named... Uh, a couple of guys, really, Tony Rice and Dan Crary yeah. uh, were heroes. I mean, actually, at Winfield, uh, I got to do a workshop with Dan uh, on stage there. So he's now, still playing great. He's and still doing and good. That win how long has Winfield been going on? I think since 71. Somebody may correct me. I think somebody may have just been there. I think it's been 71 or 72, something like that. Yeah. Maybe it's a little earlier a, it's than a that. Fam yeah. such a famous festival now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Manlin Championship, Banjo Championship, and Flat Picking uh, among a few other things, but those are the biggies, yeah. Yeah, not a finger style. Actually, yeah, the finger style too. Yep. Finger style yeah, too yeah. is in there. Because yeah. I think, I, I want to say that Pete Huttlinger um, yeah. Yeah. was involved with that. Yeah, and, yeah. I'm um, sure he's won it before. I think he won has. it, yeah. 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 
Um, yeah. What an amazing thing out in Winfield, Kansas. Yeah, and of course, just the whole vibe, the whole uh, scene out there is great. It's not just the just the, uh, the uh, contest, but the the stage shows are great, obviously, and the it's the jamming in the in the parking lots and in the campgrounds is awesome. So. And it's a pretty big deal now. So there's yeah. quite a few folks. Yeah, I think around twenty grand, twenty thousand people. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Did you yeah. have good weather? It wasn't too bad, yeah. There was one day that, that it rained. I, used, I usually say that the, you don't know what it's going to do at Winfield other than that it will be bad. You don't know that if it's going to be cold or hot, but it actually was pretty good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I can't, can't complain. So. Good. Yeah. Well, we've had so many people ask about cross-picking. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And um, can you guide us through some of the, um, some of the aspects of, mm -hmm. of cross-picking, mm -hmm. kind of through the basics into some more uh, advanced things on it? And, and you, as, as you all have questions on cross-picking, just put those up, and we will um, uh, try and get to as many of those as we can. Uh, but if you have a question, just type that in, and our producer will try and get that up, and we'll try and to get to as many of those as we can. Um, yeah. Um, Cross-picking, what we're really doing uh, with the concept is we're doing what a finger-style player would do. Uh, we're usually playing an arpeggio, but the way I'm going to define it is if you play three strings or more. Um, do you they know, have to be adjacent strings? They don't have to be, no. Okay. No. Um, I could play, um, let's say if I played an arpeggio here. So that's, you know, a G, C, E. That's like a C arpeggio mm -hmm. uh, there. Uh, I could play that um, closed, but uh, normally what we're going to try to do and when we're cross-picking or flat-picking at all is play as many open strings as we can. Right. Well, what that usually means is the way that we're going to play an arpeggio tends to be playing multiple strings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I could play a, um, an arpeggio like this, for example. I could play a G arpeggio. Right, so there's G, B, D uh, on two strings. But normally when I'm cross-picking, um, I'm going to try to... Um, Cross picking is going to be defined as playing three strings or more. So that arpeggio played this way on strings four, three, and two would be cross picking. This method of playing on two strings would not be considered cross picking by my definition. Is it, was there another name for, that, for something of that sort of um, technique, or is it just? I think people in other worlds would probably just call any of it an arpeggio. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't necessarily say that they wouldn't call this cross picking. They just say it, it's another way of playing it a G arpeggio. I assume, but can you, can I don't you, know what they would Before it we way. get into the nitty gritty of it, can you can you give us just a quick example of? Uh, you know, a, a bit of a song or something that uses that technique just so they can get it in their ear. Yeah, um, and like I said, I really did do a little more cross-picking on Nine Pound Hammer than I normally would <laughs> there, but <laughs> I probably overdid it. But uh, I'm going to do one um, that's been around a long time called uh, um, Jimmy Brown, The Newsboy. Just a really simple tune, um, just two chords. And uh, based, I'll be playing it based on the uh, maybe a Carter style, a lot of strums and that kind of filling it out a little bit. But I'll, I'll do a lot of cross-picking too to kind of show you what's going on here. It's out of C. And that did do quite a bit of cross-picking. I don't yeah. know whether we had this camera angle going, 
going enough, but your hand is really moving on some of those spots in there. Tell us about the patterns that you're using for well, that. Well, uh, a few different patterns, but basically, you know, and anybody that defines it, um, uh, cross picking from uh, the perspective of a flat picker traditionally will define it as this, which is where we're playing a forward roll, basically. For example, three, two, one. Like most people, if you ask them to define it, would define it that way. That's what it is because it's based on what George Shuffler did with the um, with the Stanley Brothers. Right. So he was trying to fill out, uh, you know, he's trying to fill out some some of the space there where it's a pretty sparse band, uh, and uh, and it does sort of simulate a banjo row. Mm -hmm. So uh, normally, when you think about cross picking, you'll just the first thought should be that it'll be a forward row, three, two, one. All right. So that's the basis of it. Now I can play that a couple of different ways. The way Shuffler did it, and so the way a lot of people are gonna do that is you're gonna play three, two, one, and you're gonna play down, down, up. Down, down, up. And so you're, in this case, we're playing in uh, four, four times, so you have eight eighth notes in a measure. And so that, that feel of those three notes uh, tends to be syncopated. So you so. kind of end up with this three against two. Exactly. Bop yeah. bop exactly. bop yeah. bop sort of a yeah. feel. Yeah. Um, if, if you're, um, I'm sorry, I, for, I failed to mention when we were uh, getting started, we have, uh, Tim has graciously given us some uh, uh, PDFs to download of some of these examples of the roles. So the, there, are, there are two examples uh, or two PDFs. They're on our discussion board. Fabian, you're putting up the links for them, I know. Um, one of them is called the Home Sweet Home one, and then the other one is the basic cross-picking patterns. The, what we're talking about now is on that basic cross-picking patterns sheet, and that sh Scheffler roll, is that how you pronounce it? Scheffler, yep, Shuffler S -H is the first yep. example that we're talking about. Now, as you're looking at that page, let me, make, let me get it here in front of, with you. You'll see the little notations there. It has the music notation and the tab. And these little brackets are the downstrokes, and the little V is the upstroke. So that's what you're trying to. That's what how they how they notate that in guitar uh, in guitar world is uh, the brackets for down and then the V for up. So uh, that is a regular uh, C major triad, G, C, and E, and um, with these different combinations of ups and downs. Um, yeah, and we can get we can get rid of that syncopation too. We'll get to that later. But um, uh, the in other words, you can you can you can uh, put a two note toggle, what we call a toggle, in the measure and, and get rid of the syncopation. We can talk about that later. But there's also another way you can play this role, um, a couple of different ways of playing it. So that's the basic shuffler role. Now a guy named Clarence White. Um, who's all of us, he's our hero, as flat pickers, uh, played with the, with the birds, uh, most people may probably know him from that, and with the Kentucky Colonels. Um, um, he would tend to play this role uh, with what we call a rest stroke on the first beat. So if I play a rest, rest stroke, R-E-S-T, um, I'm playing, for example, the third string, and my pick is resting on the second string, right? right. Um, the idea of the rest stroke. So it's your follow through, is you're not you're not playing the string and coming off it like this, right? So you're following through on the string. It's a very powerful sound, and so uh, it also will then emphasize that first note. So what you end up with if you do do it Clarence White style was you would play a rest stroke, and then you would play on the second string a down stroke, but it would be a swing stroke. In other words, you're swinging so that so you can not capture going to the next string. Right. So you're it's not a rest stroke. Yeah. So uh, we we'd refer to that as a swing stroke. Uh, so you're clearing the, the first string and then now you're playing up on the first string with with another swing stroke, right? So there's two strokes, the rest stroke, you're staying in the string. The swing stroke, you're going to clear the string and come up like that, right? Two different strokes here. So with the shuffler roll, you would just play uh, two down strokes, but they both would be swing strokes, right? Swing, swing, up. And we're not talking about swing in the sense of how the, how the beat feels. Yeah, jazz, not, right. not a swing feel. Right, right. Um, and so the difference with the way Clarence White would do it, would have done it, would be rest stroke, swing, up. It's still down, down, up, but you're playing rest, swing, up. Is there a difference in the sound? It is. If, so if I played the the, uh, the shuffler row without doing it, without doing the rest stroke, it would sound like this. This is pretty even.
Okay. And with, you're doing down, down, up, down, down, up, rap, down, up. Okay. Rap, rap, rap. Uh, so with the, with the rest stroke, you're just going to hear a very powerful, powerful first beat on it. And it could drive you crazy if you didn't keep it moving. So, you know, you'd want to... <laughs> that very powerful sound that he got where you're very syncopated and all these huge notes, it comes from that. And so, and so you're not necessarily trying to really slam that first note harder. It's just naturally coming out harder because right. you've got to right. go into that next string with it. That's yeah. stopping the pick on that second. Right. Note. Yeah. 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 Usually when I teach people the rest stroke, the first thing they'll do is they're, <laughs> they're just killing the guitar. I mean, it's just this huge sound coming out. It's like, okay, well now you can back, back up i mean mm -hmm. you can back off it that's the idea it's, it's a very efficient way of of getting a really big sound so uh and that's a it's almost a, a whole other discussion because it, go, it goes to technique but when, you know anytime you're playing rhythm all those notes will be will be rest strokes quarter note or longer generally is how you would define it in this case mm -hmm. we're playing eighth notes but mm -hmm. in other words if you had a quarter note duration you would always play a rest stroke now but, i th is this something you're consciously thinking about? In a, I'm it, is do now, this song. <laughs> it is now. Uh, this song, I'm going to use this type of stroke, or this song just has this type of stroke in it, and you're able to flip between the two um, styles pretty, pretty effortlessly. Um, actually, this, um, this style of playing two downs in a row, there are a lot of players who would never do that um, because it's going to slow you down. General, most people it would. People mm -hmm. like somebody like me, it would. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and so what I'm going to do is, if I'm coming out of this um, alternating pick, right, down, up, down, I'm, I'm playing a folded scale or a straight scale. So that's alternating pick, right, down, mm -hmm. up, down. I don't really want to come out of that and go into this, mm -hmm. the, the two downs in a row. So what I'm probably going to do is take a tune like, uh, like I just played, um, um, Jimmy Brown, the Newsboy, and stay with that pattern the whole time, mm -hmm. generally speaking. Mm -hmm. I'll, what I'll do is just do little bursts out of it. If I'm playing... Uh, uh. Just do a quick burst like that uh, of something that will doesn't get me too far out of the of the system there, but if I'm if I'm playing uh, along with the swing strokes, I don't like to go into this. I like to devo devote a tune to it. Now we had um, a question. Uh, Jeff BLK72 is asking, "What gauge pick are you using?" I would imagine you would need to use a fairly heavy, sturdy pick I, in order to do something. I guess it'd be like relatively that. heavy, but it, this is 1.14. Um, and that's a, a Jim Dunlop Turtle. Uh, uh, yes, that yes, that's the Gator. Uh, the, the Gator. The, the Gator. Gator. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, the idea with flat picking is that uh, if you're playing a string and you want to uh, go to the next string below, uh, for example, with a uh, rest stroke, um, if you're going to the next string below it, you don't want that pick to bend and slow you down. In other words, it's going to slow you down because it's hanging on the string above. You want it to play right through it, push it out of the way. Uh, but some people will use a little thinner pick and actually bend it a little. In other words, if you're putting an arch in it, you're effectively making it stiffer. So. Mm -hmm. um, but and you have about how much of that pick showing? Just about a quarter of an inch? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, um, what are some of the variations of that? I noticed we got a couple different ones. You've talked about the shuffler roll. You've talked about the Clarence White mm -hmm. roll. Um, what are some of these other ones used for? And, and guide, yeah, guide us um, through those. Some great flat pickers, um, notably Doc Watson, um, would generally play, um, I hate to say they always did something because it's hard to say what they always would have done, but when I've seen uh, Doc playing this roll that we just did, this forward roll, he would play it alternating pick direction. So you can play the same note. Consistently. Down, up, down, up, down, yeah. up, down, up, no yeah, matter what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like I said, I, I don't know that he never played a shuffler type roll, but every time I've ever, or any time I've ever heard uh, um, heard solos that he's done, uh, he's playing the same roll, three, two, one, but he's going down, up, down, up, down, up. In other words, it's... So it takes two cycles before you actually come back around to the same pattern. Right, right. and it's very difficult because you're playing down, up, down, your pick direction is going down on one, you gotta skip two right. and go up on That's three, tough. and then it keeps going. Uh, but the payoff is it's much faster, so he could be playing Again, alternating pick with his scales, his folded scales, all the stuff he's doing, and never come out of that motion. Mm -hmm. 
whereas if, with the with the shuffler roll, he would have had to come out of that motion. And so uh, that's the payoff. And um, it's just that's a particular way of playing this role that I never really worked on, so I can't do it that fast. Yeah. Um, I have another one that I use that we haven't gotten to yet. But yeah. um, <laughs> we'll get tell to us about later, this third example here, the alternating pick direction roll. That, well, that's that, kind of what that's we just what talked that is. about. Yep, okay, was that, that one. Because mm -hmm. uh, yep. I tried that one, and it is tough yeah. doing that yeah. pure s yeah. string skip, especially over those, those two strings. Um, yeah. That last one, the McReynolds roll, um, um, tell, us about, tell us about that combination. Um, a lot of times I'll try to attribute a name, somebody's name to it if I can because it helps me to remember it. But, uh, and, and, you know, usually they're kind of famous for it. But they're a great mandolin player named Jesse McReynolds um, of Jim and Jesse, um, a great player who, who can do anything on the mandolin, but he's kind of known as, uh, to be a, uh, a great cross picker on the mandolin. Um, he has a role that he does pretty commonly that... Uh, would be, for example, uh, I'll, I'll play the exact example here, would be uh, three, one, two, three. So it's a backward roll. Okay. And he's going to go down, up, up. Down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. And for some reason, I can play this one faster than the others. It's I don't almost know why, a but. little bit like sweep, pick, sweep, sweep picking would be in more of a rock setting where you're it's kind got of doing elements, that, yeah. that scrape back. It uh, does, yeah. On those. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Certainly elements of all this stuff, definitely of elements of uh, sweeping and, and a raking, yeah. As the as mm -hmm. person is learning, that, okay, so you, we've got an example of, of the, the various pick motions. Is, excuse me, is there a, a, a song that would be a good starting point for something like that? Uh, a good combination of chords, or how would we kind of go to the next step once we learn the patterns? I think really to take a tune like we're going to do, uh, Home Sweet Home, something in C is good because mm -hmm. it, um, you know, it just, the, t the chords tend to be G, you know, C, G, F. Um, uh, G is not a bad key, but the D can be a little funny to try to cross pick over the D chord. Mm -hmm. um, really, anything in C is usually what we recommend, but... Um, just because it's a little easier to play by yourself and make it sound like something's going on. Um, right. But, yeah. Um, did have a couple of questions we wanted to get to. Fesler is saying, uh, uh, do I see a little bit of use of palm muting as you're going through, especially that, that last song that you played? Did you, was Not there the, anything going on down here, or were you just kind of uh, hunkering down as you're doing those the picking? Uh, I don't palm mute, I, but I do anchor my finger. I don't know if you were just seeing it. Maybe it looked like I was staying close here. I don't mute anything. In other, in other words, no part of my hand is touching the strings at all. But you but are using that pinky brace right there. Yeah, I'm bracing with my pinky here, uh, mm -hmm. posting here. Mm -hmm. And I'm bearing down pretty hard with it. Yeah, yeah I can see <laughs> you your know? finger. finger yeah, I'm really, really using that as a not only as just a depth gauge, but as a, like a security blanket just to keep, you know, everything kind of uh, where it needs to be. But, if, you, uh, if you started this, w would it be best to start with a, once you can get the pattern down, s just start working with a metronome and, and yeah. try and get some, some comfort with speed uh, as, you're, as you're going through the pattern? Yeah, yeah, the metronome's good. Um, and I would recommend, too, if you're just starting this, um, to really try to do the uh, the alternating pick direction version of it, you need to be able to do both. But sometimes that's asking too much of it. It's like I'm not great at all of these, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just teaching it, you know, mm -hmm. from a historical perspective. And um, and some people are going to latch onto one easier than they would the other. But I'm not great at all of these. So mm -hmm. I, you know, to ask you to try to be great at all these might be too much. But um, I'd say if you're just starting out. Uh, try the alternating pick direction one first because mm -hmm. that's going to be easier for you to do fast. Mm -hmm. um, the others, like I said, are, are great because they get a great big sound, but um, guys like Clarence White and Tony Rice that do that are just, I don't know if they're mortal or not, right? <laughs> so <laughs> they can move back and forth in ways that most of us can't. So, As with anything, when you start a technique, you've got to learn the, uh, the motion of it first. You got to learn the the, the the flow of it first. So before you start working on speed, before you start kind of bashing your head against the the speed wall on that, you got to get the flow of the motion first. So make sure you're doing the down, down, up, down, down, up, whatever, and then you'll kind of see. Oh well, there's a little bit of a flow to it that happens. That's where 
that's where you want to go, but you can't get there by just flipping on the metronome and going, okay, here we go. It, you'll just all tense up, and then the next thing you know, it, it, you, you ruin the, the groove of the whole thing. Um, RJC67 is, is saying, is there a special way to hold the picking hand? Well, we kind of talked about that a little bit. Uh, Noah5010 is saying, have you ever used a stone pick? Um, what do you think of them? I don't know if I really have. Um, I don't think I have. I've used a metal one, and I used it on one <laughs> recording for an effect, and I, I don't even know where the thing is anymore. It's useless as far as a, uh, huh. uh, uh, as far as a pick. So, but I'm amazed at the pick companies that come up with ever wonderful ways of what you could use for a pick. That's right. Um, very few of them are groundbreaking. Uh, <laughs> there's just true. not so many ways you can do it. So. Um, uh, G.A. Colombo, Ga Colombo, is that, forgive me for saying the name wrong, is saying, uh, what string gauges are you using? What strings are you using on uh, the guitar? These are medium gauge elixir phosphor bronze, but, um, but I've, you know, every guitar is different. I've had guitars that feel the same way with light gauge strings on them, you know, I mean, it yeah. just depends on the guitar, but. Remind us of the, of your, tell us about your guitar. I know you told us about uh, it. Yeah, this is time, Preston but. Thompson built this guitar. Mm -hmm. um, it's a builder out in Sisters, Oregon, and uh, he uh, he built a guitar for uh, that Peter Rowan played for years, and, and a guy named Charles Saltel with Hot Rise. Mm -hmm. um, so he he got out of it for a little while, but he's back and uh, doing great work. Yeah, mm, sounds stuff. sounds beautiful. Yeah. Sounds beautiful. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll let you uh, catch your breath here just for a second while we go to um, a couple of resources. Um, I love being able to to give examples of what we're talking about of the different resources and things most every example that you saw there that we talked about is in our book that we are offering this month which you and dan miller did mm -hmm. um, called the practical guitarist's guide to scales and arpeggios i don't know which camera you want me to look at but it's it's this book and this is kind of the uh I was amazed at how exhaustive this is. This is a, a pretty exhaustive resource for getting started in, in flat picking, uh, as well as there's a whole section on cross picking, isn't yep. there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When did y'all do this book? Oh, last That's couple a, years, something like that. It's, yeah, been, a, yeah. it's been a while. Yeah. There are two CDs in the back of this. If I can get it open here. Two CDs in the back of this. Every musical example, and there are, uh, are 130 of them, they're all written out in music notation and in tab. And every example, I think every example, has a little audio track number with it, and you can hear it being played, which is really, really helpful. A lot of work went into doing all of that. Um, it's a great resource. So that, that is in, our, uh, in the packet. It's in the center button. If you're interested in this, it's the, uh, the center button underneath your Ustream window. It comes with this, and there's two CDs with all the examples here. And then there's two... Uh, of these flat pick jam um, volumes by Brad Davis, great player, and each of these has two discs. So there's actually six different CDs that come with all this, and these are just, I think there's 11 tunes on each of these volumes. So there's 22 of just good standard bluegrass flat picking um, the main tunes that you play. It's a lot like jazz in that sense. There's there's definitely standards that, right. that, that are played around mm -hmm. the campfires and around mm -hmm. the parking lots of these things. And uh, this takes you through those. It doesn't just give you the, the backing track. It gives you a slow version, uh, a medium version. Also gives you a, uh, a solo that you can practice. And let me mention this. Some of you are asking about this. Um, Steve, where's the music for this, these flat pick jam? Okay, you can go to flatpick.com, uh, which is Dan Miller's site, Flat Picking Guitar Magazine, fantastic resource. Uh, one of the little tabs there is called Flat Pick Jam. If you click on that and you go down in the text a little bit, you eventually get to a link, and it will give you all of the PDFs for all of this. So if you want the audio tracks, you've got to buy the CD. But if anyone right now, you can go right now and, and look at the, the uh, PDFs, and get the PDFs for the solos and things like that and, and start working on them. So don't panic if you get this and you don't have music. It, there's, a, there's a link for it, and you can just download all the music that you want to for it. So anyway, those are the two resources that we have for the flat picking. Um, the more 
we've delved into this this month, the more I feel like we hit a home run on giving you the right resources. Um, we have cross-picking stuff that's covered in there. In the, in the Scales and Arpeggios book, it goes through and you teach several songs in there as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. These resources that we're having, the PDFs that you're getting, those are right out of the book. So if those are helpful to you, um, check out the book. We got a good, good deal on it. Um, as well, Tim um, works a lot with Dan Miller, the head of Flat Picking Guitar Magazine. And I was just on the phone with Dan, who has devoted his life to putting out these resources. Mm -hmm. He's been doing this yeah. 20 years, he said. Yep. He's been doing yep. Flat Picking Guitar Magazine. Um, and he's... he's uh, keeps putting out great resources on that. I would encourage you check out Flat Pick, uh, Flat Picking Guitar Magazine. It comes out three, four times a year, I think. Three times, four times. I'm not sure. Yeah, I um, think it's four. Yeah. And there's Man's a. Kill me I don't know. It's it's one of these great resources that's not a whole lot of fluff and all content. You know, a lot of guitar publications these days you pick up in the in the, the newsstand, if you just r squeeze the thing hard enough, but 70% of the ooze that would fall out is just marketing from companies and uh, uh, useless. Um, and then it's got a couple articles in there. What I like about flat picking guitar and some of these resources is that it's all just content. It's just interviews with great players. You've been in there. Um, who do I saw that they had uh, coming up? David Greer. We had uh, uh, David last year. And uh, it's just interviews with the players. And then it goes through all of these songs, some of them complex, some of them less complex. Each one, and it comes with a CD, so you can hear how them all, how they go, and hear someone explaining what are the tricky parts of this thing. It's very helpful. I mean, it's just pure content. I love it. So if you're interested, if this is a style that, that speaks to you, check out our good friends over at flatpick.com. F L A T P I C K dot com, and um, they can get you fixed up with uh, the magazine. It's a great resource. Um, the beige looking button underneath there is this real bluegrass book. We've offered the real book for many, many years, which is for jazz, but now they're starting to come out with other ones. And this is a, uh, uh, the real bluegrass book with a, just a ton of the, I forget how many songs are in here. Matt. Uh, Flinner, mm -hmm. who you know, mm -hmm. yep. put this all together and uh, did it with Hal Leonard. And um, these are in typical, typical real book format. You get chords at the top in the typical keys. You get lyrics, single note melody, and uh, really, really basic, good, solid changes of what people people need to know when they're playing in these bluegrass jams and things like that. It's a great resource. That's there, too. If you're interested, it's the beige button there. Check it out. It's a great resource. We've got a good price going on it. All right, one more. This has nothing to do with flat picking, but what? I was just so excited. Ah, it's, this, is, this is Christmas is coming. I was in Home Depot the other day, and they were unloading the, 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 the Christmas trees. It's ridiculous. We're in September, and they're unloading the mm -hmm. Christmas trees. But if you want to practice on some Christmas music, Here's a book that I found, uh, just uh, has come out. Tommy Manuel put out a project, great fingerstyle guitarist. You all know Tommy Manuel. Man, I would love to have him on the show. Tommy, if you ever see this, I would love to have you on the show. Um, it would be an honor to have you on the show. He did a project, gosh, back in 2011, that was uh, this wonderful Christmas project. And the arrangements are not, some of them are completely crazy Tommy Manuel arrangements. Some of them are just great, lyrical, not completely difficult, but very musical arrangement of Christmas, Christmas classics. Mm. Anyway, found this book. We got a great deal on it. I think it's only like 18 bucks. And it, you get 12, 12 or 13 songs, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Jingle Bell, Silent Night, uh, I'll Be Home for Christmas, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. Um, the music comes with... Uh, it's got music notation. It's got the tab underneath it. It's got all the parts because some of them are, are band arrangements, and so it has the other guitar parts in it as well. It's fantastic. Even little notes on how you should play it with pick and finger. You know, it's a great resource. I was thrilled we were able to get it. If you're interested, that's the greenish button 
on the other side. So we've covered all three buttons now. Anyway, check this out. Good stuff. And you got three months to uh, get it worked up so you can play it around the Christmas tree when everybody's over and they say, hey, don't you play guitar? That's, that's the time when you need to be able to, hey, why don't you get your guitar out as long as they're all here, you know, and all the relatives around the Christmas tree. That could either be the most terrifying moment you've ever known or <laughs> it could uh, be a great time. So get, we've got a couple different Christmas books in the store, so check them out. Good, res good resources. Let's give something away. Um, we had, um, what do we have? We've got some earbuds from Griffin, uh, kind of wood-toned earbuds. Hmm. So someone is going to win this. The winner of this is coming. The winner of this is, wow, David and Drew Bryan. David and Drew Bryan. Uh, if that's two people, David and Drew, then uh, you're going to have to share these. I don't know how that's going to work. But anyway, <laughs> send me your information at service at mightyoakmusic.com. Shipping information, mailing address, things like that, phone number, and uh, we'll get these out to you. It's fun. There you go. Um, we'll give away a guitar a little bit later on, so stick, stick, uh, stick with us. Uh, Kao one is saying... How is the book for a rank be beginner? Um, uh, the Tommy Emanuel one, or the the the? Okay, if as far as this book goes for a rank beginner, probably not. It would probably be a not. little bit. You got to have at least some some music reading and guitar playing skills to be able. To, I mean, you need to know the notes in the first position. Uh, mm -hmm. You need to have some basic picking skills underneath your belt. Um, basic chord knowledge, uh, open chords, things like that. I'd say if you've gone through session five, six of the Learner Master Guitar course, you'd be, you'd be ready to start to get something out of this. Um, it does go step by step when it gets there, so it's not like it's crazy, but you do need a little bit of, uh, let me kind of get past the intro text, you do, need, you do need a little bit of knowledge to be able to kind of run through some of these scales and folded scales that we start talking about toward the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I mean, here, I'm, I'm yabbering on. You're the one yeah, who wrote well, the thing. Well, I mean, not for the rank beginner, but you don't have to be that far, you know, advanced to get, like, like he said, if you can read tablature or, or just get around at all in the open position, first position, you're fine. We're not doing any, anything up the neck very much, so. Yeah. 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 Um, yep. Great resource. Mm -hmm. The Tommy Emanuel book? Um... This is uh, more on the meteor end of the uh, spectrum, but it's not crazy. Like, that's not too crazy, but it's, you know, I I'd say if you're around session 10, session 11, uh, you're starting to get where you could get something out of these arrangements. Uh, we also have a book in the store uh, by Michael Green that's Christmas arrangements that are a little bit uh, more on the beginner inter intermediate side of things that you might want to check out. This is Tommy Emanuel, so you don't get to be Tommy Emanuel by playing beginner intermediate arrangements. So, uh -huh. um, so it's got some advanced material in this. Um, there you go. All right, enough of me yabbering on. Um, Sleeping Angel Maria is asking, so is there really no wrong or right way when attempting flat picking regarding alternating picking versus cross picking can it be just what feels good? Uh, I would say be consistent with whatever you do. In my world, I'm, what I've always tried to do is, like I said, try to keep the alternating picking thing going. That's why I, I uh, recommend that when you're trying to play this particular role, try to do it with the alternating pick direction because it's hard to move in and out of it. Uh, other than that, there's no rules as long as you always, kn I, I would just say always know what you're doing. If you go to a different way of playing, if you go down, down, up, be aware that you're doing it. Otherwise, it can really blow your mind. I mean, you know, it could be. <laughs> it could, I'm, and I was, I'm serious when I say that guys like Tony Rice and Clarence White do things that mortals can't do. I mean, they really seem to have a natural way of doing things that some of us might even say we're wrong technically because yeah. they, you know, because it, it's not consistent, but they can do it. So uh, I, I would rather be consistent and try to basically stay with uh, alternating pick direction, which we're getting there, too. We're getting into some roles that I'm going to talk about that will, are a little easier to do that with. Do you want to do that first? Do you want to do the home sweet home first? Let's do that first because uh, that will incorporate 
we need to get this before we get to that because that's going to incorporate some of this stuff. Tim yep. brought in another PDF that you don't, unfortunately don't have yet. I will put that up uh, tonight or tomorrow on the discussion board so you can see it's actually in the book. It's on page 127 of the, of the book. And it is a four-note cross-picking pattern. So talk to us a little bit about what you mean by a four-note alternating cross-picking pattern. The, the one we've been doing is three notes. So we talked about earlier how... Um, Three against, you know, when you're playing in 4-4 four, four time, that's going to have a really syncopated feel, right? Um, we also have the problem of skipping the string. If we want to play an alternating roll, down, up, down, up, we have to skip that second string and come up on three. That's very difficult. Or if we play a four-note roll, uh, we can kind of get around that. So what I can play is three, two, one, two, and now I'm ready to start the roll over. So it's four-note roll and it's alternating pick direction. Remember, I like to stay with alternating pick direction if I can. Down, up, down, up. Right. And now that's the roll starts I would over. be more familiar with that right. pattern. That, right. that pattern is more comfortable to me than some of the others. Right, right. Um, and I, um, we'll talk about how to get rid of the syncopation, syncopation with the three note roll, but, and we'll, we'll talk about how to add it to this. And I'll, I'll show you how I can get around even playing a whole lot of the three note roll. But So there's my four note roll. Things that I've played earlier, um, just to give you a feel for all of it. When I when I played uh, Jimmy Brown the Newsboy earlier, I was mixing in this role, all kind of all the roles that we've talked about. But um, so what I can do with this one is, if I want to create uh, syncopation, what I can do is I can play one, two, three, four. Right? That's just gonna that's gonna line right up with a four four measure. If I'm playing eighth notes, I just do that roll twice four note roll play twice I got my eight eighth notes right well if I want to keep that from being so right down the middle of the plate yeah. and syncopate it what I'm going to do is play two notes I could play any two notes but those are usually the ones I'm going to pick because they're mm -hmm. adjacent there's my roll now play two notes and now start the roll over and what happens so you do is two this. downs uh, no it's alternating so it would be down up okay. so it would be the roll down, up, down, up, and then down, up, and then I start the roll over. And there's oh, where I get my syncopation. Okay, I see, right? I see what you're doing. So yeah. now the sound's going to be... There's my roll again. Now, I'm straightening it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep the thing going and show you how it'll, how it'll create a little more tension rhythmically. that yeah so I'm introducing uh, the syncopation into a note roll that's straight that way mm -hmm. now the one I'm going to do with the other roll if we go back to it here's my three note roll again I'm going to do exactly the opposite now to get rid of that tension I'm going to add add and I measure I'm going to play the roll twice now add the toggle call it a toggle when I play those two Which notes. Which is just the, the G and the C. Right. The third right. string and the second string. Note. Right. Okay. So we'll, just, we'll call that a toggle. So like, like, you're, like a toggle switch, you're flipping back and forth. I'm just rocking back and forth between the three and the two. So I can play three, two, one, three, two, one, toggle. All right. And that's going to straighten the measure out. So I'll, I'll get rid of the uh, syncopation. So I'd have top of the measure. I'm going to go back to syncopated. Right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Straighten it out. Right, so if I'm playing, you know, home sweet home. Right, the chord's changing on the top of every measure, so I want to play this straight version. Right. If I don't, I end up with this. Which is very cool, and mm -hmm. it's something that Clarence White would have done a lot of. Uh, but uh, you don't always want that kind of tension. You don't always want that kind of, uh, of uh, syncopation. So that's the two ways you're going to handle it. Um, you can have a roll, the three-note roll, that automatically gives you syncopation, and you're going to get rid of it with the toggle. 
or you can have my favorite roll, the four note roll, which is very straight, fits right into a measure, and I'm gonna create tension with a toggle there, the two note roll. So what, what happens really in my life is I don't need a hundred rolls mm -hmm. because I can do anything with that one roll and a toggle. Believe it or not, that's one roll. I mean, you, you, know, yeah, you yeah. don't have to know a hundred rolls. And so um, what I would say is look at, the, look at any of these forward rolls. Again, if you can play the, the forward roll, the original roll we talked about, like the shuffler style roll, but play that in an alternating pick direction and then work on this four note roll, then you've got almost everything you need, really. Yeah. I mean, there are a couple of different things. One more would be what I call this the Bill Cheatham roll. Um, it's a fiddle tune named Bill Cheatham in the... the uh, uh, B part goes. Well, that roll, I'll put it back in C since that's where we've been the whole time. I can start it anywhere I want to, and the way we've got it written here is to go. So it would be two, one, two, three. And, but still alternating picking. Yeah. Down Alter and up. Alternating Just picking, pure yeah. down and up. Right. If I start the, that roll on the uh, on the uh, on the second beat, that's where Bill Cheatham. You could play it here. Right. That's why I call it the Bill Cheatham. I just like to give things names if I can. But well, let's put this into a musical context and take a look at that second PDF that we had put up there for Home Sweet Home. So if you can yeah. take a look at that real quick. And uh, Tim, talk us through this and play this for us. Yeah, um, really what's happening is I'm doing just the forward roll. Um, the first, very first measure is this. And that's the, uh, the three note roll that where I've gotten rid of the, uh, the syncopation with the toggle. So I'm gonna play the roll. Toggle, right? There's my toggle. Because I'm going to change chords on the top of the beat and do the same thing over F. Same thing. Then I go back to C. Same thing over G, but I'm going to start on a B note. All right. And then now, uh, see. And now I'm playing a note still over a G chord. that's where I'm just capturing parts of the melody right, right? okay uh, and I'll play the whole thing through after I just walk it walk through it with you here and then I'm back on measure uh, eight back to just a C chord now I'm capturing a melody note there too so I'm playing the same roll so that'd be uh, four three two four three two four three but when it gets to that uh, that'd be beat four of measure eight. I'm uh, playing an open D again to catch catch the melody. Now here's now I'm going to switch to that uh, four note roll. That's a different roll there. So I'm going five, four, three, two. Right. Remember any of the rolls we've talked about, you can put on any set of string. You could even yeah. skip a string. Right. Yeah. So we've got our original roll. I could play. I could skip a string right and do it, do it that way. Yeah, that's the way you want to think of it because, again, you don't want to think of having a hundred different rows. Think of it as the same row where you're skipping a string. So that was measure nine uh, over a C chord. That's that alternating pick direction row. All right. And then back to measure 10. Same thing over a C chord is the four note row. Now F, same thing. Back to C. That would be two toggles in a row right. or, or playing drone notes, however you want to look at that. And then this measure 13. Back to that four note roll ending on a, I am doing a string skip here. Okay. Uh, and then measure 14 as we take it out. Toggle, 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 toggle. Back to the four note roll. What I'm doing at the very end is, if I take an alternating uh, bass idea like this, what I'm doing is I'm just cross-picking over that idea. Ah, sorry. That's really 
tell you all what's happening there. So um, just to go back to the toggle idea, anytime you can take a, a melody, uh, there's the melody. I can just throw a drone note in there. All right. And uh, you can call it a toggle, call it a drone, whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it. But should I just play through the whole thing right quick? Yeah, why don't you okay. go ahead and play yeah. it. Yeah, uh, let me just play through that arrangement here. This is Home Sweet Home. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having Tim, me again, Steve. For, it's always good. Wow. Yeah. It's just been a, an hour filled with good information. Um, Yellow Rose Fiddler is saying, do you have any flat picking or cross-picking cross instructional DVDs? Uh, you can go to flatpicking.com. Well, I think the only thing that... I don't know if you have any DVDs over there. Not, on, not strictly any. on that on the, the cross-picking subject. Um, but there's certainly a lot of flat picking things at at uh, DVDs that you can check out at, at uh, flatpick.com. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, wonderful. Uh, Hockey Dad is saying, "What is a good starter guitar for flat picking?" Well, what we learned from George last week: a 1938 <laughs> D18. Yeah. That's right. I'm still trying to get good enough to get one of those. That's what I'm shooting for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if well, that's not where yeah, you want to start, then you right, know. right, right. Uh, it, mostly uh, dreadnoughts, you know, is what most people play for this. But uh, although I love any kind, I love an OM guitar uh, for the sound of this. But just for bluegrass, most people tend that's the typical guitarist to play a dreadnought. Um, but uh, other than that, you can start at almost any price range and just look at what's out there. But yeah, yeah, Martin um, puts out great stuff. We, yeah. we talked about a Martin uh, guitar last week. That was kind of in the, uh, I'm, I'm going off the top of my head, I think around the $1,900 range. And that uh, was a fine, got a wonderful sounding instrument. Um, speaking of guitars, isn't it about time we give a guitar mm. away? We have been lax in giving guitars away. Um, so we need to give a guitar away. This is a guitar by our good friends over at Epiphone. Um, it has a little bit of a pickup system in it, and that's kind of an acoustic electric. It's a cutaway. Um, rather thin body, not a completely thick body. I don't even know if it's tuned up here. Might even have Greg take a look at it and see if he can't uh, uh, tweak it out before we, uh, before we give it away. The winner... Of this one. Are you guys excited? Gosh, it's been probably over a year since we give away a guitar. All right. The winner of this is, and I hope you're in the U.S., um, Jalapeno69. Jalapeno69, you have just won this fantastic Epiphone acoustic electric guitar. There's a soft case that comes with it and some other stuff. We will send this to you. You've got you to gotta claim it, though. Service at MightyOakMusic.com. Send me an email there. You'll be amazed at how many things I go to the trouble of getting and giving away, and nobody even claims them. So, um, and if you don't, I'll give it away next week. I promise I'll give your guitar away to somebody else. So you got to email me, service at mightyoakmusic.com. Send me your mailing address, phone number, so I can uh, uh, get in contact with your screen name, things like that. Congratulations, Jalapeno69. All right. There you go. Hey, hey. Uh-huh. Um, all right, well, let's land the ship. we got two minutes to get out of here. Um, we can play something before we go? Sure. Okay. What do you, what do you want to do? Uh, uh, I don't know. We'll figure out something. Uh, we can do that if we want to, if I can remember the, remember the melody, or you, if you've got a tune that you want to do, too. We can do that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, all right, hey, i got some announcements for you. i got to look at my notes. I've been lax on looking at my notes. Um, Remember about three weeks ago, we had on Soar, 
Sounds of Acoustic Recovery, Mike Byer, our good friend there, and then Jack Pearson came along that last mm. half of the show and played. It was a great show. Uh, Mike uh, emailed me the other day. They're already starting to use the materials that we provided for them, and uh, they're still talking about the great time that we had there. If you're interested in supporting that organization, and I can't think of a better organization to help support, uh, Fabian has a link. Fabian, you're probably already on top of me. Um, on top of this, there's a soundsofacousticrecovery.com backslash donate, um, and that will get you to um, where you can donate to this wonderful organization, providing music instruction to vets to treat PTSD and some of the other things that are going on. It's amazing the power of music, and it does what it does. That's, that's how it works. You know, it, it brings joy, brings life, and helps bring these soldiers back. Uh, and does its uh, a wonderful work there, too. It's a great organization. Support them. Um, hey, I've got a surprise that y'all don't even know about. Next week, next week, we are going to have a very special guest, and we're going to be on another night to be able to accommodate him. A couple of weeks ago, I put up on our Facebook page uh, a video that someone had sent me of a fantastic fingerstyle guitarist, phenom guy. Uh, his name is Ian Ethan. Uh, uh, kind of tricky, but it is Ian Ethan. You can go to ianethan.com and uh, check him out. Fabian's got a link to a video if you want to put that link up. Uh, Fabian, I think I put that in there. Yeah. Uh, of course, everybody's probably watching the video of Ian right now. Anyway, he is fantastic, and he lives somewhere far, far away from here. And I remember just saying, wow, this guy is amazing. And uh, never thinking anything about it, I liked him on Facebook, so I was able to cut, uh, get uh, uh, a little bit of information about him. And lo and behold, uh, last night I'm flipping through stuff, and he, he put up on his Facebook page, so glad to be coming to Nashville. <gasps> when? And he's coming, actually he's got a concert in Nashville next Thursday night, and um, he uh, could not make Tuesday of next week, but he could make Wednesday. So we are going to have a special Wednesday edition of Live Lesson next week. This is October 7th, and um, October 7th, right? That's next week? This is the 30th? Tomorrow's? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Wednesday, October 7th, uh, Ian Ethan is going to be with us. Wow, it's going to be crazy, slapping, uh, finger style, all kinds of great techniques. What a brilliant player. Young guy, fantastic. This is going to be such fun. Um, Ian is going to be with us next Wednesday night. So we won't be on Tuesday. We'll be on Wednesday. Make plans to be there. We'll have some other fun stuff, some giveaways and whatnot uh, with Ian. But it should be a lot of fun. He hasn't been on the show. He's been very kind to deal with. I emailed his wife late last night, and we've been in contact. He's been on the road. It's been fantastic. So um, that's going to be next week. It's going to be a great week. Um, Check out our YouTube page, Guitar Gathering. If you, uh, we have, gosh, just 40 or 50 videos over there now of the various guests. We'll have Tim, Tim's episodes on there uh, in a week or so once we get them um, edited and whatnot. And so they will land over there. Whew, that's all the talking that I have to do. <laughs> let's, um, let's play a little bit. Thank you, Tim, so right, much. Thanks for having me. Getting, thanks it's been for great in, yeah. getting yeah. to know you yeah. and... Uh, um, Getting to learn about flat picking, cross picking, bluegrass, all mm -hmm. this fun stuff. Yeah. Um, all right, we're going to play a tune. This is called It's Only a Paper Moon. We have extensively rehearsed this. Um, do you do this in C, by the way? Uh, if you want to do it in C, yeah, we could I do probably, it. We practiced probably it. probably could, C. but yeah. You want to do it in the, in the I'd, key? So, I'd prefer C, but I could do let's, it there. Let's if you do want it in to. C. Okay, okay, let's do it in C. I'll, I'll transpose. So I, the key, it's written here in G, so I'm just going to site transpose up to C, and we'll see how many chords I miss along the way. All right, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. I shouldn't look at that then. All right. Yeah, okay. that would really screw you up. Two, one, two, three, four.
All right. Good night, everyone. Uh, it's been a great show. Thank you so much, Thank Tim, you, for bringing Good all stuff. of your expertise and knowledge. Keep up the great work in your learning. Playing music's a wonderful thing. We'll see you guys next Wednesday.